Hello and welcome back to Adventures Edge. Tell us more, number four. Number four. I, I was. That's fun to say. Also, digging with Darun. That's the subtitle. Yeah, the subtitle. Subtitled. Oh, I like it. Mm-hmm. All right. So today at the table, you have myself, Don. We have Rochelle, Thad, and we have a special guest today. Yay. Never before on mics in the Adventures Edge studio. Mm-hmm. Who do we have over there? Hi, this is Kirsten. Kirsten, welcome. Thank you yeah. for joining us today. Thanks for having she me. She just Don. came off the street. She was like, I heard this was the hideout of the of the Adventures Edge. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Kirsten is in our regular mm-hmm. tabletop game, which we were, yep. were playing in shortly. And five minutes ago we said, Hey, do you want to jump in? And she's like, sure. And then we just I, basically <laughs> back to it. She did. She was like, <laughs> Is that how it went down? <laughs> it was like, <laughs> Do I have to? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there was a signing of contracts, some uh, gold exchanged hands, yeah, you know, yeah. the usual. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Graciously. Oops. Agreed. Yeah. We thought it'd be fun. To join us in the studio. It's either that or hanging out with the pets. And I, b- I hope this turns out better. <laughs> Wait, that was an option? We could just hang out with the no, pets? No, no. Her just, yeah, hanging out with the pets. Just, you know. All like alone. Just, all alone with the dogs. All right. So and you're t- not all alone then. Yeah, well, Yes, that's so true. We also have a couple of the kids upstairs. There, that's but true. we'll make it worth it. Don't forget Zoe. Oh, uh-huh. Zoe, which is our cat. Mm-hmm. Our sweet, sweet cat. So if you are listening to this on release day, then you probably notice as of right now, Adventure's Edge, Heroes of the Veil, number 25 is not sitting in your inbox right now. Mm. And that is because... <laughs> You know how it started with a sickness that we had to cure for the whole town? <laughs> we, well, some of us drank the water. <laughs> we've had three weeks worth of, Ugh. Rochelle and I were wiped out for a week. Your, you got yep. the, yeah, the, the first crud. time COVID. Yeah. First time COVID, last time caller. Yep. Um, and then, uh, now, yeah. It's making the rounds. Yeah. Jeff has some sort some of- Some kind of funk is making the rounds. Throat yeah. thing. He called me yesterday. He goes- I can't even emulate it. He goes, I don't know what's going on, but I don't think I can record. <laughs> it, was, it was like nobody needed to hear his voice. It was really... <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. So here we are. We're going to do this today. Yeah. And yeah. we have a... We got, talked about this beforehand. We were, we were planning... So it. this we, was a plan. Yeah, this was a plan. So what we're going to do today, though, is we've got about uh, 45 minutes. Yeah. To, to get this in. I got some questions. You got some questions. Hopefully there's some answers. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. And so I just was like, hey, let's see what happens. So based on the, based on the, the subtitle you've yeah. given it, you wanted to talk about uh, some of Dayrun's, uh the Earth Elders, mm-hmm. some of this backstory. Yeah. So we kind of talked about in these other, other Tell Us Mores, um, you know, we talked about the world, we mm-hmm. talked about some gods. And today maybe is a little bit about... Some secret society stuff, maybe. Yeah, some stuff that doesn't get talked about a whole lot because I don't know if not necessarily does, Darun doesn't want to talk about it. It just doesn't seem like we've just been running around. Yeah, we got you other guys, things, better things to do. You guys, have and been busy. he didn't want to really, you know. But now some things are coming to light, and I think he we need to address some things. So much more, obviously, Morose's death was kind of I, he kind of felt like he pushed it. Deep down inside, inside of a cave, deep down underneath the mountains, like a, a good dwarf would. Um, but there's some things that perhaps the party, he's not telling the party. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and how this all became. Well, so let's, let's see if we can, where, where should we start? Let's give an idea, I guess, a good explanation of how the earth elders fit into this world. Like, because if you go way back, basically from what the world tells us, the history tells us is that the giants were, were certain caretakers to his perspective of certain, have, have you talked about like the monoliths really? So in our, and, and tell us more number. And, yeah. And tell us more the previous one, which number which, three, number three, mm-hmm. the one just, we just came out, which I'm sure you even haven't had a chance to release. Having it just, it to just came out last week. Yeah. Um, we talked about gods and creation mm-hmm. and 
uh, specifically then how, yeah, we talked about how the, uh, the, um, these colossal, um, like monolithic crystalline structures, the, these, uh, world towers sort mm-hmm. of things came into being. So I, I mean, I did talk about that. Sure. The, the short story, you should just go, go listen to that episode, but basically there was this huge essence storm from the dissolution of two of the gods at the time mm-hmm. who battled and imprisoned this other one. And then Ogmas was kind of left holding the bag. And to save the world, he created the giants to become the caretakers of what he was going to create, right. which are these world towers, mm-hmm. because he knew- Pillars. World pillar, pillars. Uh, yeah, world pillars. But he knew by creating them, he himself was going to unravel unravel, and become no more. So he infused himself into these, these world pillars, raised them up. Ley these, lines. These, yeah, these eight pillars. Uh-huh. He, he erected them around the world, forming the ley lines and the foundations of magic. And then he joined the pattern and became no more, leaving the giants to become like the caretakers of the early um, structures. But the giants then were, I mean, they are starting to dwindle as far as their strength goes in this world. Yeah, so I mean so the giants the giants did they, they were they were basically the the main I mean there was a, because there was a variety of races at that time mm-hmm. because the immortals were kind of all doing their own things. The celestials who had been like the earthbound people, they went up to Lunas. The infernals are down running the infernal engines. The Fey are scattered. And the giants were left to be like the caretakers of the world, and they begin building their own empire. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, this lasted for like thousands of years until the next, which is the current pentacle of gods, began to form, mm-hmm. and they began manipulating the world. And then they created the new, the new mortal races. Right. And that's why the humans and the dwarves, um, and so basically they started moving into the world. And the giants, who are kind of all over the world, which we really haven't got too much into that, but the giants of Galtia specifically, which is where we're at here, Mm -hmm. were eventually, yeah, dwindling. Like their empire was kind of crumbling from within. And they saw this. They understood this. They did. And they felt like need. there still need to be some kind of guardians of these pillars. And that's where the earth elders come in. Right, because what happened is the, the, the dwarves who had lived, they were created by Tobrus in the Halls mm-hmm. of Stone, the first halls. Blessed be Tobrus. Yeah, deep within this, this chain of mountains mm-hmm. in Galtia, they were, they were pushed out by the goblins from their home, home world, Gods. homelands. And they came up into the world and began settling Galtia, which, right. were the, which were the giants were. And the dwarves basically kind of displaced the already crumbling giant empire. Yeah. And then there was this like handoff where this, these giant earth elders somehow came into like contact with some dwarves and like, Hey, we're, we're leaving basically. They're going to go to the Southern Island. Our, this is what we do. We kind of monitor these world pillars to make sure that they stay stable. And there was this like handoff. Right. And so the earth elders, <clears throat> the way it's seen from their viewpoint, and that's what they teach, is most of the dwarves, or at least a lot of the dwarves, are kind of taught to be somewhat of, uh, at least in this area of, oh, not warmongers, but very, you know, uh, warriors and in, in battle. <clears throat> when they came up above the ground, and... Uh, the Earth Elders are kind of more of the a, a peace seeking uh, group, and they're more of protectors. So, like in Darun's case, he has uh, certain abilities from the Earth Elders that give him strength within the ley lines. So he uses ley lines to increase his spell casting powers. And uh, but he is still very new to the actual geography of all. He's He's basically just learned from teachings at this point. He's not had a whole lot of experience out. Um, and their their elders now is more of taking care of existing temples and ruins and kind of, you know, defending them 
from evils that may be and rebuilding certain kind of statues. So he is very curious about these, these, whatever is turning this into stone out here in kind of just random spots through their adventures so far. Okay. And the the giants that they found in episode, what, 23 probably or 22 on their way to the goblin. I think 22. Nest, yeah. Um, was a little bit more concerning because, I mean, these are giants that are turned into stone, but not, this is not a carved. Right. So, so there's not a direct connection between the giants and the dwarves well there was so like the giants used to be the like the main race on galtia okay before the dwarves even appeared right and so when they were kind of like their empire was failing from within and they were dying off they came into conflict with the dwarves and we basically had like these giant dwarf like early battles as the dwarves were basically kind of being pincered between goblins and giants. But there were some of these earth elders of the giants ended up communing with. So your dwarves. flow chart needs tweaking. What do you mean? Well, because as I'm looking at this flow chart. Oh, the flow chart we still have sitting on the table here. Oh. It looks like the third storm happened. Before the creation of the dwarves, it, no, it did. No, it absolutely did. Mm -hmm. So the the way it worked, right, is we had, you know, a, after pretty much all the other gods, the, the the early main gods were dead or imprisoned, and it was just Ogmas hanging out and, and Silver Elf the tree. Ogmas wanting to preserve as much of what was left of creation, created the giants and said, "Hey." <laughs> Oof. Yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna raise these world pillars to preserve the world, and they were they were basically given the task of becoming the new caretakers, and they were and then Agmus left basically because he infused himself in. There was still this storm, but the storm eventually was contained and created these other gods eventually. So that's where the giants had this long span where it was just them. So the giants are still here after the third storm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, They're okay. just a smaller... That was just when they, they were created before. It. They were created before the third storm, but mm -hmm. persisted after the third storm. Right, because the storm itself was managed because of Agamemnon's sacrifice. I see. Yeah. Okay, so... And, yeah, and then basically... And I haven't, I, well, I might have had to sketch some numbers out, but it's like, it's like several thousand years before the new pentacle, the new gods began to form and then created these other races. Okay. Giants are hanging out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. living the, on the land. No Isana, Tobris, Eidvar, Kirgan, or Numara. They were, it was, they were godless. They were, none of them were around. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. I got it. So, going to that, my question would be, what, I mean, I think I, I know the answer, but I get your viewpoint and your question, how you think of it. What are the pillars being defended from? Well, or who's why are the they need to be physically managed, or is there someone trying to destroy these pillars? Um, what I think there's that's a two part answer mm -hmm. is that in in the way I've so you, so and maybe we should just sort of take, yeah. take one minor step back is that okay. you know I I did extend when you guys were creating char characters a degree of like some collaborative story. Mm -hmm storytelling and world building. And so you brought the earth elders to the table, which yep. I thought was super cool because it really tied in. Unknowingly, by the way. Unknowingly. <laughs> yeah. That was completely. Um, so yeah, that was, that was like your invention. Um, is that these ley line structures, maybe they degrade, maybe yeah. they, they just, 
like they just require. So the earth elders are physically taking care of these ley lines, and these ley lines are kind of energized by certain temples or certain monoliths, I would imagine. So physically, that's where we have our skills are to physically protect these things from deteriorating. That, that's kind of the gist of it. Mm-hmm. But the second, but to answer the second part, yeah. and I want to keep it brief because I don't know how interesting this is. I don't I hate things to sound too like luxury, but yeah. Um, but the second part is, yeah, sometimes they do require protecting because, and this ties in to history, mm-hmm. which is like, so there's this like 20 years ago, there was an invasion and I really want to spend some time talking about that, but not here. Okay. But there was a group of people who attempted to, to subvert the world pillar here in Galtia for their own purposes. And it backfired like catastrophically. Mm-hmm. So that be- becomes a even larger concern now is that are they going to try it again? Sure. Was it damaged? And so you're, I mean, you're still like this apprentice, right? Yeah. The assumption is, is that some of the, all the senior people have been trying to get to the world pillar to assess it, mm-hmm. but it's not accessible because it's kind of surrounded by like, like an army of undead. Yeah. Psst. So it's a problem. Wait, the world pillar on Galtia is surrounded by an army of undead? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. And are most of the people on Galtia aware of this fact? Yeah. Uh, let's, see if, let's see if I can do this in a paragraph. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> great. Invading force comes from overseas, begins assaulting the Duchy of Gilmore. Everybody fights back. The invading force tries to do something with world pillar. There's an explosion that kills like hundreds of thousands of people. And then soon thereafter, a plague besets the country, okay. wreaks havoc. Bad timing. Bad times. Like it was, it was a bad few years, kind of like 2020. <laughs> um, but because like so many people died and there was so much magic involved for years after, yeah, undead, there's like basically a border where undead will like roving packs of undead. So there's still forts on the, the borderlands that are like, that's what they do is that they, they keep these people from invading the land. Okay, so yeah. this is, like, everybody in Galtia kind of like, oh, yep, that's where the undead are. Yeah. I mean, then, and when I think about, like, you as characters, you were all either just being born when all this was happening, so I don't, well, Ooh. you're you're a little bit A little older, older, but still. But it's like you didn't live it. So you probably feel a little, I don't know. Detached no, that's, from that's it. just how it is. That's just how it is. Yeah, a little detached from the reality of. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Happening in your times. Oh yeah. That's just that's just how it be. The undead are over there. The flower shops over there. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so to recap, this undead mess is just the leftover consequence of this previous situation. Yeah. And they just haven't been able to clear through and and clean up the mess, basically. Yeah. Good. Well, because because there was a follow up plague that decimated the empire. We had like a huge power vacuum, like the king got killed. I mean, there was basically death and destruction and everybody just basically did what they could to survive. So what was left of the meager forces, they've been just kind of like holding the line for the last 18 years. And we're kind of hitting that point where there's not enough people and resources to really break. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, and that is actually really something that I'm hoping we will get to in the podcast, Mm. like in the story. Do you think so? Can we talk a little bit about Urmros's kind of his the book? Can we talk a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. about that? Oh, yeah. Um, so it turns out that he was a follow, he was following Zakad. Zakad, everybody remembers back when we were in the old rundown temple, we found perhaps the followers of Zakad. Yeah, we found a ring actually that I have. Yes. Still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, were the earth elders aware of? His following because usually Tobrus is kind of the guy for Earth Elders, to right? Follow. He's 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 the they are that is the god. But um, I'm either concerned that because Umaros was a was a pretty old elder, why was he here in the small town doing this kind of small stuff? I mean, it kind of felt like he was left behind, maybe from what was really going on like sent away perhaps, or did he become a follower when he became, 
Like, is he attached to this temple, this physical temple? Okay. Okay. Um, what, what I'll tell you is, you know, cause you've had, so your character has had some time to read these books. Yep. I mean, yep. you hit a few weeks mm -hmm. is that you don't think that he was specifically like attached, like, like the temple that you guys yep. wandered Found, through and yeah. dealt with that, that was a group of, of dwarves mm -hmm. who built that. I mean, at this point, um, you know, based on the age, I, I don't remember what we specifically said. I mean, it has been like a few hundred years, like it's right. been there maybe even older than that, is that they were a sect of dwarves who started worshiping Zakat. And we haven't even talked really about Zakat at, at all. Right. Like Zakat's not a member of the Pentacle. They're not, okay, we've got five gods. Not on here. Not on there. But there are four, I'm, I, I was trying to decide what I originally was calling them. I had them down as like elemental lords. Mm -hmm. Basically, they were almost like demigods, okay. if that. Because I have mentioned there are other forces in the world sure. that are not decidedly not deific. Right. And Zakad is one of these like elemental beings who the basically the belief that like Zakad like lives in the sun, that like the sun is like its home world. Like okay. it's this because the it's like the Lord of the Flames uh, is like or he's called the Magi. But he's this like magical elemental figure of fire. But some of its Zakad's attributes are like greed and temptation. And I was trying to decide if I was going to codify this, but um, maybe I will right here, is that Zakad actually created the, the, the jinn. Okay. But we haven't introduced them into this uh -oh. world. Uh-oh. The jinn. Oh, what was Supernatural. that? Supernatural. Oh. oh. <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want to mess with jinn. Ugly stuff. Gotcha. So... Where it goes, but where it ties back to the dwarves is that when the dwarves surf surfaced at this point, like a, um, was it like 2,000 years ago, from their first battle with, um, when they were displaced by the goblins, they were followers of Tobras, but they didn't know any other gods. Right. They came out of the first halls and into the sun and began learning more about the, uh, the world outside. And I think at that point, some of them began learning about Zakad. And I also think that some of the giants who, because I've been, I've been completely vague, vague about when these elemental beings came into the scene, and I actually kind of think that they predate the current pentacle. Mm -hmm. That they were, they were just more elemental and doing things in the world, but they weren't like the, like the pantheon or the, right. the pentacle. So like Zakad predates the pentacle? I, I think so, but I really... Um, was it almost not like an organized religion in a case? It was more of just a, they have this, they have certain powers that are beyond like the characters, obviously. They're, they're pretty powerful characters, but they're not a demigod, but they're not a deity, but they're just almost like, I guess, alien or like. Some sort of lesser power. A lesser power. Okay. But in this case, not, not necessarily devoted to good. Sure. But not specifically evil. Right. They, don't, they don't think in those terms. But the, basically, the, so, the, so the dwarves who started worshiping Zakad were ostracized by the other dwarves. Okay. And like, they were like, no, that's, you're basically, that's blasphemy. Right. You, you can't worship anybody except Tobras. Tobras is the creator. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up becoming like, um, they were, they, they left. The, like the people who worshipers didn't mm -hmm. feel safe there and fled the Silver Kingdoms. And where you guys are right now in, in the land is like where the humans are. At that time, there was nobody there. And that was where we had the sect of dwarves who kind of like went off on their own and they built this temple and they were a long ways from home. Sure. And they were basically, they founded this worship in this valley, mm -hmm. built this temple. So was Umros, was he hiding this? Oh, yeah. He was definitely hiding this. Uh, I didn't obviously pick yeah. up on it. I just didn't know if someone in the Earth Elders found out and he had been kind of ostracized, but yet still, mm. I, you know, it just, it like, that's a lot of work to hide something that big, I think, like your, how you, your faith from a group of people that, I don't know, like, did anybody in the Earth Elders know that he was following this? And is this, it's frowned upon by the Earth Elders, did they send him away? Like one person said they found out. I'm not going to kick you out of the Earth Elders, but you can't be, you know, or is it just he just was that good at hiding it? 
No, I I think Umros is uh, he was here for a reason, um, and maybe it was because uh, he was intrigued by the discovery of this this temple of Zakad. Yeah. But um, there's some significant things here in this valley that he was researching that okay. was like very much Earth Elder related. Are these is his journals gonna? Am I gonna pass? It, I guess I don't tell me until I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it, you know. No spoilers. Spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I I feel like I mentioned something yeah. uh, during the game. Like, uh, did I say something about a weapon? I felt like I did. The hammer, or mm. I know nothing of a weapon. I have not read the. Yeah, the I mean song, the so. the journal basically came about after he had passed away, and I. I was, I went to a one of his like work shed or, or yeah, whatever, yeah. Little, and found the the stuff that was kind of hidden. Um, okay, well, and after, then I started. You know, I told you I was reading them, but I, I guess we didn't go too much more into that besides discovery of that he was following Zakad. Okay, well then uh, this will be a reveal then for mm. people who have made it this far, uh, who follow the main story. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> is that yeah you he believes that in this valley. There is a powerful weapon that might even be left over from the Celestial Infernal War. Okay. No, I don't oh. remember uh, that information. Okay. And that really is is what he's been worried about because he thinks that there are people trying to find it. Like there's oh. another group of people. And he, that was what he was trying to sort out here. Oh. And. Um, that is a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and whether or not he came here necessarily as a Zakat worshiper or he converted when right. he's, when he, you know, researched what he could about the temple, maybe that's unclear. Hmm. Uh, but you know, the, the signet, the valley has a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And so the reveal with these giants mm-hmm. who thanks to Zinni is like, I want to go look at these, you know, up their, nose. up their nose. And then you found the symbol. Then, yeah, you know that there were still some giants. Like, I mean, and I said that they were old. Yes. Like, yeah, like, I don't remember what I said. I could probably look it up. But look it up. I feel like to. I said, like, a, even like a thousand years. Like, they were old. So they were here doing probably something related to Earth Elder Cell. Yeah. Yeah. They'd been turned to stone. But to your question, yes. like, were they related? These were very different time periods. Okay. Uh, because the uh, the dwarves you found in the wood. Mm-hmm. And I and I, I guess it just wasn't clear. Is that they were clearly, or should have been clearly, with some research, from the Dwarven Kingdom, right? Probably to come deal with these blasphemers. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. So they were sent to deal with the Zakad worshippers. Yeah. Oh, that's actually what happened. Is that they came and sacked the temple and killed everybody. <gasps> Oh. But these ones that were, as they were making their way, they were basically, that was part of a fight. They got ambushed and they got turned to stone. Almost to the same effect, though, that the giants did. That's one thing that they do share in common. They do share in common, <clears throat> is that you have, okay. yes, yeah. Okay. But who did that to the giants? Sure. Definitely not related to okay. who did that. Okay. Um, oh, okay. See, yeah. I was yeah. trying to tie I it was together. too. I was yeah, too. Definitely conflating those two. Well, it is interesting, the similarity. Mm. Well, then this weapon, I'll, I'll have to say, hey, guys, just in case you didn't know, <laughs> there's a weapon that could end the whole world. <laughs> if you want to go look for it, we'd probably do that now that we're done with the goblins. Yeah. <laughs> now we're done with the river fairy. Oh. <laughs> oh, so an inferno and a celestial, a weapon from the infernal celestial war? Oh. Yeah, I had to read it a couple of times. That sounds, that sounds like something I should totally have in my position. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Uh, uh, okay. Ring to rule them all. What do you think of that? Uh, I think you missed a good opportunity to grab an awesome weapon. Yeah, well. Time to double back. I don't know if I should be one with a weapon. I just know that there's certain other people that shouldn't have the weapon. Well, like I, who? Well, none of me in the group. I'm just saying it's probably beyond. I'm saying, like, do these elementals still exist? Like, so Zakat and stuff, these are, that we know of, well, I guess we don't really know a whole lot about them, but there's, are they still present? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so for Zakat... And I don't feel like we answered the, you had that question about with the book. You found that book. Yeah. So the book that was in the temple. Yes. 
it was it's a beautifully illustrated book about zakat worship. Okay. Like including like the people who created this religion wrapped around the zakat and, mm-hmm. and the ideologies. So like it's like a religious textbook. Okay. Devoted to just the God. And it is beautiful, like like richly illustrated. And so like you could learn all you wanted to know about the people who worship Zakat by okay. reading this. So basically a holy text. Um yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. And does it talk about the other elements? Elementals? Not in that book. Okay. I mean, so the, this would be like, um, I don't know what's common knowledge. I mean, I, I would still, like people have all sorts of crazy beliefs. Sure. When, I, when I was kind of creating these, is that the idea behind these elemental lords is that like, this is where the people who kind of grow, create like cults and kind of like, yeah, we know there's the, the pinnacle, but these are like more primal forces. Like like tempest is like the this storm being that is just like storm like, lord, right? Because there isn't a god of the ocean. Mm-hmm. It's not like we have this ocean god. And we have Numara, mm-hmm. who is ocean related and mm-hmm. created the Merfolk, but she's not like Poseidon or Neptune or anything right. like that. That's like that's, that's not the thing. So then there's like tempest, which is this being which people claim to have seen like creating massive waves and, and destroying things. And it's like the maker of storms, but doesn't rule the ocean. Like sure. there's no vast power to do that. I'm just wondering if these elementals, are they against each other or are they working unity? Oh, you know, oh, is, oh. are they pitted against each other or? I don't see them working together or, I mean, maybe they could come into odds with each other, but yeah. They're not certainly under one umbrella of no. We're like the we're Justice the we're League. the elemental yes <laughs> the elemental Justice League or opposite. <laughs> <laughs> no because and and they don't and they don't mirror like because the because uh, like the, the third one we haven't mentioned is Shadar, mm-hmm. which is like this shadowy being, um, which people believe might even be like a like a direct piece of. Axios, which is the god that was imprisoned in the moon by the other two gods, and like this piece of like evil shadow who like like that there's like cults that kind of worship Shadar. Mm-hmm. And there's even like beliefs that maybe Shadar like maybe created vampires. So like oh. there's this whole thing there. But yeah, like it's a it's an entity in the world that is terrifying, but how much power and control it has. Mm. So do the Fae, the Fae obviously go way back, right? Yeah. Yeah. So are you aware of these stories of these? Or are you like, how long have you lived on, how long, how old are you in this? Uh, eh, right. I mean, do stories of these get to you or is this pretty much just created based upon the races, the newer races after the third storm? I would imagine like stories of elemental powers. You know, almost like fairy tales would get to, I imagine the Fae like stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fae love stories. I think that the Fae, the, like there's powerful Fae, like the Fae queens, which we really haven't like really written down. Like how much am I just going to literally just borrow? Like are we going to have Titania and all these different people or not? Or just like something new. But I think that there are Fae beings who are like the originals that were first created. That could be equally as powerful as these others, mm-hmm. but they're yeah, like they're not deific. But that doesn't mean they right. can't just destroy puny mortals, right? Um, but they're aware of the pillars and and the powers that they. I mean, are Faye in, in really in tune with the ley lines? I think they would be, but I also think mm-hmm. that this is one of those where the Fey became a scattered people. Mm-hmm. After the original war, that there isn't a unified. When you say the Fey, yeah, right. like Zinni's experience is the Fey of the Hollywood, right? Who have lived here an indeterminate sure. amount of time, don't have a connection sure. necessarily to these other Fey. Yeah, like Zinnia was like, oh, wait, there's there's Fey that control water, water. Rivers, what? Yeah. What? Yeah, like they don't I have don't wings. Know. This is weird. And I think I yeah. think that is where the Fey homeland was like wherever it was, was it like fully destroyed or was it just divided? Like that's kind of this running little theme we have where all the Fey kind of long for this homeland. But yeah, they're just 
they're scattered people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Doing their own things. Yeah. Wait, do you have to talk about the fourth one? The fourth scattered, the, the fourth minor, because it's... You just love me saying it. Because it's so silly. Jeb? Jeb. Jeb. The fourth for Jebediah? <laughs> it's, no, it's just Jeb. Jeb. Just Jeb. Hey, it's like a, the, it's like a, or, um. So uh, we have Zakad, yeah. Shadar, Ooh. Tempest, oh. and Jeb. What? Hey, I'm Jeb. <laughs> that means it's the most dangerous one, right? Because it's a simple name. Yep. Nope. I think you need your Earl change there. So well, I'll, I'll say that this, so, um, I'm Jeb. Because we're, we're just about out of time. <laughs> um, you know, when I was thinking about like this earth fertility being. <laughs> Jeb. Jeb's an earth fertility? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> earth farming. Is, is I was actually originally started thinking about like a Tom Bombadil type figure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm where not give that reference. Is it Tom a- Bombadil? Yeah. From- Dude, your nerd card is like. I'm sorry. I mean, precariously- I did play football in Look, I'm in drawing a blank too. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, wow. From Middle Earth. Tolkien. Tolkien. Oh. Yeah, it's been a while since I've read those. Oh, okay. So just keep going. Oh, sorry, my I, I, oh. I, I'm going to, into dice jail. Let <laughs> let us know if you understand the reference, so that uh, we either don't feel quite so alone, or Don and Michelle feel vindicated, vindicated, <laughs> validated. Oh, I'm sure they'll get vindicated. And awesome. <laughs> it's not a bad thing oh, that you know. So I don't get the reference. So. That's what I was just saying. That's what that confused look was. Like. Yeah. So he, I'm so sorry for disappointing. So you. he's like, a, he's like this, pr- like a, almost a primal power. Like there are like powers in Middle Earth, okay. which I mean they really kind of go to in some of like the Silmarillion and some of the older books, but they make appearances in The Hobbit and Lord okay. of the Rings. And he's like this seemingly merry singing old dude that hangs out in the forest that they oh, that they meet. Okay. He's like, oh, uh, la, la, la. what? He's yeah. got this beautiful oh. wife, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. But meanwhile, despite this like persona he has, he's like ridiculously powerful. Like he's like as powerful as or probably more so than like the Astari, like the yeah. Gandalf. But you don't see it. Okay. That's kind of what I'm imagining is that you have this like overalls and flannel. like this like yeah. like you know, I don't want to say hillbilly, but this like this this guy, yeah. man of the people. Seems like yeah, like a salt of the earth, salt like salt of the earth. Here and I that am. might be how he like he appears, but he's like like really powerful yeah. and can manipulate things and like, oh, your crops are looking a little rough. Well, let's see if we can do something about that. And then he, you know, he wanders on and, you know, maybe you give him a good meal and the next day Everything your whole is... crop is like grown three feet. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. Yeah. So, so he's like the Jimmy Carter. <laughs> of... Oh, <laughs> you should rename him. He shouldn't be Jeb. He Isn't that what Jimmy. Jimmy Carter kind of gave off yeah. that, his persona when he was Aww. just a peanut farmer? Just. Want to do good in this world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. The <laughs> Je- Jeb's template is Jimmy He's Carter. Jimmy Carter. <laughs> now he can't say anything bad about Jeb. Now, now he, he appears. He appears as Jimmy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> he need help building that house. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I got a hammer here. <laughs> oh, oh, that's kind of sweet. Now, no. Oh, okay. Now it all comes together. Mm-hmm, there you go. Jeb is a great name. Anyway, yeah. It, the thing doesn't always have to be epic in the series. That's right. like, it can be, right. It doesn't it have, have to be four it. syllables. And <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm Jeb. Part, part French and part Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. Maybe when I get to this part of the, the answer to a lot of questions. So, the Earth Elders, are they, are they keeping in contact with, with me? Do you think? I would imagine some letters have gotten to me. Want or wanting me to write back them, they're from they're I probably sent out a message that Umros is you know no longer I'm with seeing, us. I just can imagine the mail kind it's of piling up at up. the house there, and they're like, <laughs> Last notice, <laughs> <laughs> you've not paid your earth elder dues. <laughs> dues. <laughs> We've been trying to reach you about your, yeah, about your, your earth elder warranty. <laughs> I've got all this other stuff now I'm caught up in. Yes. What I'm imagining is that then you will probably have received the notice. Yeah. Well, congratulations. You're graduated. And, yeah, right. Uh, finish your Morse's work. <laughs> yeah. Well, that puts a spin on things. And uh, I feel like perhaps uh, Rune is going to have some convincing to do, maybe. Because um, I really don't know where we go from here. Mm. You know? 
Like it seems like we were brought together for this purpose and then we decided to do good and mm-hmm. help out more. But now we're kind of done with that. It seems like it'd be a big step into our heroism. Yeah. Well, I really do because we are winding down season yeah. two. You know, we're this is season two. Season one. Season two. Uh, this is just season woo. one, babe. Season one. <laughs> We're winding down Adventure 2 of Season sure. 1, which will probably be the end of Season, season one. 1. Sure. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll have a little hiatus. And then for Season 2, I mean, you guys, it's important that you drive the story. Yeah. Um, but I do see that as being an important. Yeah, I would imagine so, because it, there's a lot of things to be concerned about between the whole undead trying to break into, you know, taking well, over. I mean... Honestly, Zinnia just learned about these undead. So I'm like, <laughs> right? I'm, um, what? So yeah, I, I had kind of in my mind, I like Paladin like, were sure would be nice right about now, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, <laughs> Zinnia takes on a new job. Hire. No, 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 let's hire someone. Oh, okay. Here's your roadmap. Just, just go find that really cool, awesome weapon. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then make your way to the pillar surrounded easy, by undead. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Smashing. Yeah, you got this. You got this. <laughs> Step you one. haven't listened to a whole lot of our like, <laughs> <laughs> Step one, find we weapon. Are Step two, smash. We are challenged by, you know, blink rats. That's what we got to focus on. And, and goblins. That's what we focus on. <laughs> there was an entire argument over a talking stick. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I was. I had to wrap a talking stick. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we I hope we dug a little bit further. Darun's got a lot of answers. Um, it does just have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was I. That, yeah. I feel like I've gained some insight. Okay. It's a good uh, push. I, it makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. No. 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 I, I have more purpose and understanding of what my direction is. How's that? Good. Yeah. Zinni has no direction, but that's okay. She's along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there will be. Yeah. Really. Oh, 100%. Zinnia? Good yeah. luck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what is her motivation? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I mean, so I met, so I imagine, like, we'll do one final, and then we're going to wrap here. Okay. Is that I, I had, when I kind of wrote this out, I was imagining a three season story mm-hmm. with three, like, very unique, like, big challenges that are all directly, like, really, really important to each of you. Okay. Because when I, I didn't want to have this, like, oh, a group of strangers are brought together. You guys have your own baggage and motivations, but here's this epic story right. that's not going to take any of that into account. It's like, this is all about your motivations and what you brought that helped create this story. Like, the fact that we started off with, like, people making all these fae things. I, I went back to the drawing board, rewrote stuff just to accommodate that. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we shall see what happens. Yeah. I'm excited. Somebody squashes the fairy and it's all over. <gasps> oh. I mean, that's a direction. It just happens to be flat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like the world of Tellus. Oh. oh. <laughs> I think that's that's, that's that. it. All, all right. right. All right, guys. <laughs> next time. Something next week. Yes. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.